It's baffled scholars for two millennia. It is a puzzle made of multi-dimensional elements, an enigma with roots that reach back to the dawning of time, perhaps before. Daniel explained part of it. Ezekiel and Isaiah had glimpses into it. John saw it all for the time of the end. That time is now. Join Derek and Sharon Gilbert on a journey that spans the course of history, from Eden to Mount Hermon, from Hermon to Babel, from Babel to Rome, from Rome to the cross, and from there to us. Biblical prophecy is coming true before your eyes, and to understand it, you must discern the times both then and now. It's time to unravel the threads of this all-encompassing prophetic paradox. It's time to unravel Revelation. Welcome to Unraveling Revelation. I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert, and we are so delighted that you have joined us once again. So much stuff has been happening in the world that, well, where to start? Where to start? Well, before we jump in, I want to remind you to please get it, take advantage of our free mobile app, because not only does that bypass the gatekeepers who uh, like to enforce certain rules on certain social media sites, it also gets you access to all of our video content, which now includes Sharon's new podcast, The Armored Sheep. The Armored Sheep is w next week? That, yep. Should be, by the time you watch this, it should be out already. Oh. So, yep. And, and we have brought back our program, The Bible's Greatest Mysteries, which we did for Skywatch TV about three years ago. It is back. Our first guest, Carl Gallups, sharing some really remarkable insights into the Bible. I mean, the... the Genesis 1-1, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, as Jesus describes himself mm -hmm. in the book of Revelation, is in Genesis 1, verse 1, and Carl explains that in the very first episode. There is so much in there. You are going to dive into your Bible and see it with fresh eyes because he has been given, I, I think, the most incredible vision into what is there. Yeah. The original language in the Bible is much deeper than we ever imagined. Yes, and Carl applies his skills as an investigator, pattern recognition skills developed as a law enforcement investigator, peace officer, etc., cetera, uh, and turns it to scripture. So you, you'll find that at The Bible's Greatest Mysteries, available now on our app. Also, our channels on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire TV, and you'll find all of those linked at our website, gilberthouse.org slash app. We are everywhere. Oh, my goodness. Well, um, I want to apologize up front. I'm drinking my water because I am taking an antibiotic now prophylactically because of my eyes, and they're still healing, and I'm still a little bit photophobic, and I've got a little bit of makeup on my eyes mm -hmm. today, so they're probably going to be really crabby later today. But God is healing them. And I want to thank you for all of your prayers. And speaking of prayers, before we get started, because of what's going on in Israel, our good friend Aaron Lipkin has put out a call for donations for, I think, a very good reason. Right. He's uh, He and his family live in a small community in Samaria. Now, the world calls this the West Bank. Samaria, Judea, that's what the Israelis, that's what Jews refer to it. So that's what we call it, Samaria. It's uh, northeast of Jerusalem, and it's in an area that uh, because it was uh, part of the country of Jordan until 1967, Jordan renounced its claim to that area in 1988. It's the term West Bank. Right. The, West Bank of, of the, the Jordan, Jordan River. Yeah. So there are Arab villages around and there's been some security concerns. There have been all along. Uh, they do take their security very seriously. So they are looking for scopes for the rifles for the security team for his town of Ofra in Samaria. And, they need uh, five of them, I think. They need five of them, and these are not inexpensive. So uh, no, I'll put a each. link to the Lipkin Tours website. There is a place there where you can donate at Lipkin Tours. Uh, if you go there, um, uh, if you if you want to support uh, what, what they're trying to do, it's it's a little convoluted to explain. But you can go through the site where you would normally put down deposits for a tour. But if you uh, designate that this is for other. Mm -hmm. And then you can send the money and uh, send a contribution and then designate what it's for. Yeah, it, it does work. Derek and I have done it before yeah. because they needed boots Yeah, when he, this all started. His unit in the IDF reserves needed new boots to get through the winter. So we contributed for that and we'll be sending a contribution to uh, help with the, the scopes. Um, again, this is a situation that we Americans just find difficult to get our heads around. 
Uh, I just did an interview with a, uh, a gentleman who's one of the senior reporters for uh, Israel 365 News, oh, yes. which, is, which is a website that we look at on a regular basis, Israel365news.com. Tom Horn always looked at he, he absolutely did. Uh, Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz, who's the guest on my podcast, A View from the Bunker, this past week, and he, they live in, in Katsreen, which is a village in the, uh, the northern part of the country. It's on the Golan Heights, uh, un, unofficially referred to as the capital of the Golan. Yeah. We, we've been there. We've, we've stopped there. We've had falafel. We've had shawarma in Katsreen. And so we talked for nearly an hour about what it's like to live under the threat of missile attack. And right at the end of the interview, as we're saying our goodbyes and signing off, the sirens go off. And I'm sitting there stunned, and he says, oh, got to go. And he jumps up and has to run out because less than 30 seconds later, which is what he said the situation was, mm -hmm. as he was running to the safe room with his wife, uh, I, I heard explosions in the background. The closer you are to the source of the missile, right. the less time you have. Yes, yes. Uh, down near Gaza, they've got 15 seconds. He said they've got about 30 seconds, and he wasn't kidding. I heard the explosions. He came back on because the connection was still open and said, that wasn't too close. It didn't rattle the windows. Mm -hmm. I mean, we Americans, we have no clue as to what this is like. Most people around the world, thankfully, have no clue. A day is coming when we will, and that's why we're doing this program, Unraveling Revelation. Well, anyway, Aaron and his team need these uh, scopes mm -hmm. to help defend their village should the need arise and so anyway lipkintours.com there'll be a link in fact i'll put a, a qr code that will take you right to the place where you would donate that'll make it easier than trying to remember a yeah. long url so the qr code scan that with your phone's camera on the screen that'll take you right to the website if you can help out so, so rosh hashanah rosh hashanah uh shana i actually shana. Shana Tova. I mean, it, we Americans, English speakers would probably try to pronounce it Shana Tova. No, it's Shana Tova. Mm -hmm. I'm reliably informed because Sharon looked it well, up. Well, I looked it up. I hope I was <laughs> right about that. But it, it is the, the head of the year. That's Rosh in mm -hmm. Hebrew means. And uh, that is, of course, a word that in Ezekiel 38 has caused some confusion because there are those who looked at that going back to mm. Schofield, C.I. Schofield, in his yeah. uh, study Bible about 110 years ago. I have two of his Bibles. So I love them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he, didn't but he, was, right. he, he didn't get everything right. And uh, identifying Rosh in Ezekiel 38, which uh, means in that context, chief prince. Uh, Gog of Mega, chief prince of Meshach, Tubal, and... Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, Rosh there means head, like chief in that context. Now, am I correct in that? It does not mean Russia, is the point. A similar word, Rosh, means evil? I would have to look that up. I don't know. Hmm. Don't know. Good thing to look up. Yeah. But yes, but anyway, many, many things are happening so. over there. It's that time of year, and we highly recommend watching a video that was produced by Past, uh, sorry, Rabbi Zeb Porat, he is a pastor as well, he pastors a church, um, he is, explains why Rosh Hashanah is not the New Year. Mm. There are not two New Years in the Jewish calendar, should not be. Yeah. There is only one, according to Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And that would and be the in one the in the spring, right, mm -hmm. in the month of... Uh, we are in the seventh month right now. Yeah, Tishri. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, uh, no, is it Tishri now? No, yeah. the, the head of the year is Tish. No, Nissan. Nissan is the yes. one in the spring. Yeah. That, that is the new year. Yep. So. I'm going to blame my antibiotics. <laughs> See, at least you've got an excuse. I, I have weird, done. I am having a bit of a weird reaction to him, though. Yesterday, I was, I felt like I was drunk. Mm, yeah. They were having a weird reaction with something else I took. Yep. Well, uh, yeah, like I said, at least you've got an excuse. I have none. <laughs> so, um, obviously, since we recorded last week's program, which was the last Thursday of September, there was the, uh, the, the missile attack by Iran on uh, Israel and uh, some 180 missiles, ballistic missiles fired at Israel. Not as many as previously, uh, because the previous attack from Iran against Israel was about 300. Well, Most since then, Israel has <clears throat> retaliated. But I think that there's a major retaliation coming. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, Israeli politicians, left, right, center, were all saying uh, this was a serious mistake and uh, Iran will pay a price. Yes. There was a very um, 
proportional response, which is a term that's being used by a lot of Western diplomats. Uh, President Biden said Israel has a right to defend itself, but the response must be proportional. Uh, I'm sorry, in that part of the world, proportionality does not get you peace. It, no. it, it, it's interpreted as a sign of weakness. That, that seems harsh. It seems... But, Inadequate? But it, yeah, but, but, it's, but it's true. I mean, what you're saying, the, these people, if, if somebody in the Middle East... One country slugs another. The other country has to slug back harder. Otherwise, they're perceived as weak. By the way, this morning, uh, the head of the United Nations has been banned in Israel. He's now persona non grata. Yeah, Antonio Guterres. Mm -hmm. uh, So, and that that was a long time coming. Guterres refused to condemn Iran's attack of Israel. But at the same time, uh, as we're recording this, this past Monday, or an employee, an, an official with UNRWA, which is the United Nations Relief and, Relief and Works Agency, which is the main agency working to distribute humanitarian aid to Palestinian Arabs, both in Gaza, but also in Lebanon, mm-hmm. where a lot of them are still living in camps. And in Lebanese society, they're not allowed to hold certain jobs. They're basically discriminated against the way Jews in Russia were discriminated against in the 19th century. You can't hold certain jobs. You can't live anywhere except in this little area here. And this is 75 years after many of them, their families, their parents, grandparents fled Israel because the Arabs told them, get out, we're going to destroy this new state, and then you can come back in and recut. And of course, Israel won the war in 1948, mm-hmm. and then in 1956, and then in 1967, and then in 1973. So they've never returned, but they're not allowed to integrate into Lebanese society or Syrian society or Jordan, et cetera, et cetera. We need to talk how this how this intersects with prophecy. What are we seeing here? Right. Uh, I just want to finish the point as I started Sorry. rabbit trailing. Uh, the the UNRWA official um, was also the commander of Hamas. Yes, he was terrorist. In Lebanon. And so the United Nations agencies working in Gaza, working with the Palestinian Arabs, has been totally infiltrated by Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and other terrorist groups. So when the United Nations refuses to condemn an attack on Israel, you can understand why Israel would say, you're not welcome here. Just get out. And the United States should say the same thing and cut funding to UNRWA, which the Biden administration still supports. I know. UNESCO. Anyway. uh, so Oh, we could rabbit trail trail all over the place. Right. So back to prophecy. Yes. Um, Ali Siadatan made a really interesting point when I talked with him about Born in Iran. Born in Iran, yes. Lives in Toronto. His family fled um, fled after the Islamic Revolution. They went to Paris first and then ended up in Toronto. And Bible prophecy, Ezekiel 38, 38, 39. uh, That and the UFO phenomenon, looking at how that was uh, for explanations to that and then coming to the conclusion that men like Tom Horn, Chuck Mister, Ellie Marzulli, Steve Quayle have arrived at. It's spiritual, it's not supernatural. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we concur. We, we think that's absolutely correct. Anyway, Ali said that historically speaking, it, and this is what kind of what Benjamin Netanyahu was saying in his video address to the Persian people just a few days ago. Mm-hmm. It was a wonderful address. Historically speaking, Jews and Persians have been friendly. There was a very... Mm-hmm vibrant Jewish community in what is now Iran until the Islamic Revolution of 1979. We are now at a time, for the first time in all of recorded history, where Persia has been openly hostile to Israel. And we don't see that anywhere in scripture except in the prophecy of Gog and Magog in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Now, we talked about Gog, Magog, and how we think what's happening now will lead to a false Gog Magog conflict, and we can talk about that. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, we probably should because we've, we've had some comments and questions about that. Well, first of all, when the man of sin, the Antichrist, arrives, he's not going to say, "Hey, I'm, an, I'm the Antichrist." He's going to say, "I'm Christ." Yeah. He's going to say, "I'm Messiah." He's going to say, "I'm Maitreya." Mm-hmm. I'm the Buddha. I'm everything you've been waiting for. I'm I, I'm your Mahdi. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to fulfill, I'm one size fits all. Yeah. And the only way that he will be accepted by Christians, Christians and Jews. Now, I want to remind you, there is a Bible promise that if it were possible, yes, the elect would be fooled. 
Yeah, we see that in Matthew 24, 24. I think Easy it's to remember that verse. because the Holy Spirit is part of us. Right. It's part of our DNA now. So the Holy Spirit's going to give us a slap and tell us, no. Right. Wake up, this is not the guy. Up. Right. Yeah, Matthew 24, 24. But I think the whole world is going to look at that and go, wow, this... But prophecy scholars, no matter whether it's Christian or Muslim or Jew or whatever, Hindu, they're going to look at their scriptures and they're going to see, hold on, he comes at the end of a big war in Israel. Mm -hmm. And he's brought peace. And he's brought peace. So how would that happen unless there appears to be an Armageddon? Yeah, that's a really good point. We're going to continue this discussion and explain why we think this leads to Israel and Christians, if we're still here, mm -hmm. accepting the false Messiah, the anti Christ when Unraveling Revelation continues. Our new book, The Gates of Hell, is available now, and we have a special offer on it at the Gilbert House store. You know, you're not going to find a deal like this anywhere else. You're going to get the book, which is a $21.95 value. You're going to get three DVDs. More than 12 hours of video content, plus the book for just $45. That's half price. That's half price because the whole package of retail is over $90. The Gates of Hell tackles mysteries like where was Jesus baptized and why did he choose to get baptized in a place known as the Land of the Serpent? Oh my goodness, you want this deal. This is the kind of thing that you can share with your friends, share with your pastor, read again, because trust me, the, the source information that Derek and I used for this, you're not gonna find it anywhere else. Right, it's not just an archeological or historical curiosity, it is relevant to us today. Again, a special offer for the month of October only at gilberthouse.org slash store. Welcome back to Unraveling Revelation. I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert, and I want to remind you that you can get swag. Oh, oh swag, merch? TV merch, whatever you wanna call it. There's Red Wing Saga t-shirts and GHTV shirt. I almost wore my GHTV mm. t-shirts. I, I often wear that shirt. And, of course, you've been watching the mugs. We're mugging. Yes. But you can get all of those things going to gilberthouse.org slash store. That will give you a link mm -hmm. to Light Hive Creations. That's right. It's right on the front page there. You see our good friend Kenny C. modeling the GHTV t-shirt. We've also got, as you can see, the Red Wing Saga shirts. We've got caps now as well. Oh, I know. And one of the things we really appreciate about this is that not only does Gidget Manning, Kenny's fiance, who runs Light Hive Creations, do a really high quality job applying the images to the shirts, the mugs, the caps, whatever. They're so well done. But the two of them use the proceeds, their share of the proceeds, to help Kenny in his ministry. He's a music teacher. He's mm -hmm. a world-class musician, but he, tr he teaches kids. And some of these children come from families that can't afford musical instruments. And so he uses the proceeds to supply instruments for his students, giving the gift of music. So you're helping support what we do. You're helping support children who are learning the gift of music from a Christ-filled instructor, Kenny C. And so, uh, again, that's all at our front page, gilberthouse.org. And Kenny and Gidget now working on uh, lines of clothing and uh, mugs and hats for Skywatch TV and for other friends in ministry as well. So God bless them. Again, it's going for a great cause. Oh, I know. We get a, need to get an armored sheet. Yes, teacher. yes, absolutely. Yeah, and VFTV. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. And Bible's Greatest Mysteries. Bible's Greatest Mysteries, too. Yes, we will definitely work on all of that. We Again, will indeed. Gilberthouse.org slash store. And while you're there, take a look at our special for this month. It's the... Uh, New book. Yeah, our brand new book, The Gates of Hell. Um, where was Jesus baptized? Not where everybody thinks, but it's very important because yeah. it points to his mission, his declaration of war on the fallen realm. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. Um, you have to read the book. Yeah. Read the book. <laughs> uh, read well, the book. Boy, that, that's... Well, read, read the, 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 the read book. The read book. the book. Yes. Oh, I like that. Yeah. You want the answers? Read the book. The yeah. answers are in there. People the word go, of God. what book? Yeah. And that opens a conversation. The supernatural. Yes, yes. Our friend Ellie Marzulli has used that line. It's actually brought New Agers into the, the body of Christ. Yeah. 
What, the guidebook to the supernatural? What's that? I know. You probably have a copy in your home. I do? And since, brilliant. Since you brought up New Age, this is going to feel like a left turn, but trust me, it is not. Alice Bailey and Blavatsky, who, yeah. who was sort of her mentor, um, both are long gone, but they set up the Lucas Trust yep. and many other left-hand path associations. Mm -hmm. And there are documents that seem to point to a year that Tom Horn and others, Josh Peck, Ken Johnson, those who have studied the writings of the Essenes, mm -hmm. they also point to this year. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's right now. Yes, 2025, but the Hebrew calendar just flipped. That was the whole point of Rosh Hoshana. Um, this is really interesting because there are a lot of things that are pointing to 2025 as really significant. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a number of central banks around the world, Bank of England, the Federal Reserve Bank, the uh, Bank of Europe, that are working on developing central bank digital currencies and uh, targeting 2025 as the year for rollout. Um, the World Health Organization. World Health Organization, they, yes. On paper will be in charge of the world if another pandemic, infodemic, any demic mm -hmm. comes along. Yeah. And in the writings of Alice Bailey, uh, which is published at uh, Lucis Trust or Lucas Trust, it's yeah. L-U-C-I-S. It's Tr Trust Lucifer. us, we don't buy into this. No, no, no. We're just, We're just saying that the fallen realm is trying to tell the world something. Either they're, they, they have an idea of what's actually going to happen or they want the world to believe it. Again, it's that idea of the false Armageddon. Right, right. So, uh, and we've not studied deeply the works of, of no. Bailey or Blavatsky, but we do know that she was pointing to Bailey, that is 2025. A, a great and new movement is proceeding and a tremendously increased interplay and interaction is taking place. This will go on until AD 2025. During the years intervening between now and then, very great changes will be seen taking place. And at the General Assembly of the Hierarchy, Held as usual every century, in 2025, the date in all probability will be set for the first stage of the externalization of the hierarchy. And the hierarchy is apparently a term that she gives to Are these the supernatural, masters, something like the ascended masters who then rule Fallen through uh, the seven rays, which are the seven spirits before the throne. This is, uh, Isaiah talks about the seven spirits oh, before the throne is, of God. These are the watchers, the Abkalu. Yeah. Yeah, the seven Apkalu, mm -hmm. the seven Anunnaki, the judges mm -hmm. of the netherworld. Uh, she's misidentifying the spirits that she's working with here uh, mm -hmm. and deceiving people. They, they talk about the seven husband. sevens, the 49 masters or the secondary of the secondary ashrams. Mm -hmm. uh, she's, she talks about the seven major Kohans, C-H-O-H-A-N. But that's, oh. yeah, that's so close to Kohan yeah. or Kohanim. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's referring to the priestly class. Right, right. Now, I've not done a deep dive on this. Again, neither of us has. But the fact that you've got a very influential New Age teacher of 100 years ago looking at 2025 is somehow significant. She was getting some kind of a message from some spirit. But, but also, she said 2025, if I understood it correctly, was when the hidden or silent watcher would arise. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, 2025 is also, by the way, a very in interesting year because when we talked to Tom Horn about his Wormwood vision, right. uh, and this was years ago, we we the first Wormwood, had the yeah. discussion about it. and Yeah, we were still in he, the old stu Skywatch TV studio. Yes, well, he was looking at April 13th of 2029, right. and you started digging and you said, hold on, back up three and a half years and you get to... Right. You get to October 13th of 2025. Uh, April 13th of 2029 is when asteroid Apophis, I had to look that up. I was been saying Apophis for years, actually Apophis. Uh, when Apophis comes by, uh, makes a near pass, actually skirts by the Earth inside the orbits of some of our satellites. Yes, which is, exactly. Which can really cause some damage. And right. that's assuming that no Yarkovsky effects hit it. In other words, unseen things, gravity, being hit by something. Right. H hitting other asteroids the out there. Animals. Right. Yeah. So anyway, the, the track at this point, the trajectory 
brings it past the Earth inside the orbit of some of our satellites on uh, uh, April 13th, 2029. And Tom had suggested that perhaps the arrival of Wormwood, which is in Revelation 8, is the midpoint of the Great Tribulation, the seven-year period. And that's why I look back three and a half years. By the way, we don't set dates, but this... It looks like it could be. Yeah, and and that's why I backed up three and a half years as I was looking at it and realized that that was the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot of 2025. Ooh. So again, we've got a, real, a rather significant year coming um, from a number of directions, from the secular world saying, okay, we need a digital currency, the central bank digital currency. Frankly, that's what the mark of the beast is going to mm-hmm. look like. You got to get this digital currency. You can't buy or sell without it, but it's going to be tied to your social credit score. If you say things online we don't like, you can't buy if you want to go outside your 15 minute city. Okay, it's yes. geographically, it's geofenced. You can't yeah. use it outside a certain geographic area. That's what the mark of the beast will look like. And then you've got occultists and new agers looking at 2025 as the emergence of something. Mm-hmm. So, 2025, the world poised on the edge of a war. You've got Ukraine and Russia continuing to heat up. Ukraine begging the United Kingdom and the United States for the right to strike deeper into Russia. Russia saying that's a red line. We will use tactical nuclear warheads if you start destroying Moscow. Uh, And then, of course, the the, the Israel-Iran conflict perhaps spreading and escalating. Don't forget there have been some actions in kinetic events in Syria. And one of them was really close to, if not at, a Russian port. Yeah, yeah. The uh, port of Latakia, where Russia has bases. Mm -hmm. So Israel striking... um, weapons depots there mm-hmm. apparently because israel has said we are not going to allow any more weapons to transit syria on its way to hezbollah exactly so yeah a lot of things are happening but just remember when jesus said when you see all of these things look up because your redemption draws near that's the thing we can look at all of these things mm-hmm. and get our doom on and get that adrenaline rush and get addicted to the adrenaline rush been there gone through these online fora where you're looking at can you believe they're doing this? And oh my goodness, this is happening. And they're oh, trying yeah. to look. I, I prefer to sit and scratch a puppy. That that is it. And and just talk to the Lord and and know that He's got this under control. Yeah, He has seen the end from the beginning, according to Isaiah. So none of these things take our Lord by surprise. He spoke it all into existence. He knows how it's going to play out. But as He designed this creation, He gave us all free will. So that is the only truly ultimately eternally important thing that we have to deal with is the answer to that question that Jesus asked Peter and the disciples at the base of Mount Hermon. Who do you say that I am? Peter's response, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Share that hope with your family, with your friends, with your colleagues and coworkers, because at the end of the day, that's the one thing that really matters and that will set your destiny for all of eternity. Thank you for watching. This is Unraveling Revelation. Unraveling Revelation is a viewer supported outreach of Gilbert House Ministries. Follow us online at unravelingrevelation.tv and gilberthouse.org. We'd love to hear from you. Contact us through our websites or drop us a line at P.O. Box 78, Crane, Missouri 65633.